Hi, and welcome to the 36th episode of the Language Mandarins podcast. And my guest today is a very, very special guest. She is uh, the founder of the Language Heroes community on VK. Her name is uh, Eugenia Kasheva. So um, thank you very much for coming on the show. Privet, как дела? Спасибо, что пригласил. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so can you tell people who may not be familiar with you uh, a little bit about yourself? What languages do you speak? Well, I speak Russian, uh, English, German, Chinese more or less, a bit of French, a bit of Spanish, a bit of Portuguese, I guess, and a bit of Czech. So I'm just like a tiny bit, but in um, some languages uh, I, uh, I speak more fluently, some less, so I cannot say that I'm a polyglot. This is one of the goals, but um, not yet. And how, how long have you been studying languages uh, no. overall? At the age of five, I think. Whoa, so. okay. And oh, you, you started with English? Yes. You started with English? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. And at what point in your studies did you start to say like, okay, why don't I just keep going and study more and more and more? Uh, how long did into your studies did that take? Uh, uh, well, it just happened that in school I managed to learn French. Uh, then I went to United States and there I had a year of Spanish and then Latin in the university, German in the university. Chinese was my dream language, so I started learning it after I graduated. <coughs> and then I've read uh, Babel No More and after that it just clicked. Wow, I can learn languages and I don't have to feel guilty about that. Because usually I thought, okay, I just spent too much time and I'm not going to earn money for my, I don't know, studies. And what what would my husband say? But then I realized that it's just some sort of a brain, I don't know how it functions. And after that, I've launched my blog and my group in Contact. And it just all started the exploration. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about the Babel No More book? Uh, what what inspired you in, in the book? Well, first of all, um, the stories are the fall book. And the idea that you don't have to be perfect. Because uh, especially, I don't know what about guys, but for the girls, uh, it's really hard. Uh, we're, all ve we are, we're all perfectionists, uh, especially if you're like a great girl <laughs> uh, when you're used to getting A grades all the time and then you think, okay, um, I don't know this language. I cannot speak it, uh, although I have uh, I have been learning it for four, four years already and I know all the grammar and lots of the cap, but still I'm, I'm not sure. And then uh, I, I was reading that book and I realized that you don't have to be perfect. It's just, uh, it's absolutely okay. Just, you know, to learn and enjoy. And after that, uh, I've realized that I want to refresh all the languages uh, which, uh, <coughs> which, I which I've pre previously learned. And um, I've started enjoying the process, and um, I'm happy with, the, <laughs> with that. Mm -hmm. so I'm and just, then... Uh, mm -hmm. I, can, I can say that I'm uh, a relaxed learner. I, I'm not for achievement, but I am for the process mm -hmm. and for, for the joy it brings. Mm -hmm. And um, how, how did that lead to starting the Language Heroes? I mean, uh, I mean that that seems to be like an like a, a work in progress as it evolves. But how did you decide to I know well, get again, other people after, to join you? Uh, after this book, um, uh, I've started in, uh, looking through uh, websites of different polygons. Uh, I had no idea what was <laughs> what was going on. I didn't know all those guys, and uh, I thought. Uh, you have such an amazing polyglot community, but it, it was like English speaking community and I didn't find anything in Russian, uh, in, in Russia. So I've decided that we need to create something, something local, something tiny, but for people uh, who want to, who love learning languages in Russian, in Russia. Uh, that's how it started. So pretty much it, it started uh, as a blog uh, for me where I could save different links and interesting articles and write uh, write down some ideas. 
and now I have about um, well almost nine thousand subscribers, and uh, the wow. community turned out to be pretty active, and um, probably uh, the thing that uh, insp inspires me the most is that there are lots of people uh, who start with one language and then they say, okay, I want to learn not only English, but maybe Chinese and then Japanese and then Greek, uh, Greek and then Spanish. So people understand that they can uh, progress uh, pretty quickly and then uh, they want more and more and more. So I'm not alone. <laughs> and mm -hmm. this, this is awesome. Cool. And um, how did uh, for example, the 12 week year inspire you as well? Because I see that showing up in the community. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, just yeah, it all coincided. Uh, uh, I got a present from uh, one of my favorite um, publishers, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. It was just you know a New Year's gift, a twelve week year, and I've downloaded it, uh, looked through it, and I thought this approach is just wow. It it's it's so simple, uh, it's so easy, but uh, it might be effective, and uh, then. Uh, we bought tickets to Prague, and there were uh, 12 weeks uh, just before our uh, departure. Uh, so I decided to try this 12-week uh, approach for language learning, and it uh, happened to be very, very effective because that was not only me. Uh, I um, made an announcement: uh, "Okay, guys, I want to try and work on a language uh, for 12 weeks every day. Who wants to join?" <coughs> About 30, 36 people joined me. First time, the second time, since we showed results and the results were like, wow. Um, uh, the next time we had almost uh, 300 people already, so <laughs> 10 times more. And the people keep coming and they show, they see the results uh, and uh, they, well, they get impressed and they want to try and participate with us. And I think this is, this is uh, really cool because uh, we all think that uh, in order to learn language you have to go to courses, you have you know, to invest lots of money and three, two, three, four years to start uh, talking. And when people start talking like in, in several weeks with native speakers, it's like wow. <laughs> and um, I keep saying wow, but <laughs> it's just uh, it's uh, uh, really amazing. And I uh, personally, uh, I didn't expect that uh, because, well, for me it was a surprise. Uh, in university, as I've told you, I've learned German and it took me four years. So uh, I passed all the exams and I was like an excellent student. Uh, but I, uh, after those four years, I was afraid to talk to a native speaker. And and when I first did that, we were discussing like Perestroika and Gorbachev. And I was like, wow, what can I say in German? I didn't know that. And I understand that if I were told Okay, just go ahead and try. You can do it. I would feel much more confident. I, I know that I would make some mistakes. I would uh, think that I'm, I'm you know, stupid or whatever. But um, for for I I thought that I I, I was stupid <laughs> uh, like mm -hmm. for four years, and uh, then it turned out to be that I'm not. I I could um, I could uh, speak, and uh, this is uh, what I'm trying to do. I want to inspire people. Well, you're, you're doing an excellent job at, it's, at inspiring uh, language learners. And so this started about a year ago for the first time. You had about 30 people. And then uh, the summer marathon is when you say it had about 300? Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. So there's now been, in this case, how many marathons? Like three, four? Uh, 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 we've just finished the fourth one. And uh, uh, overall, we had about 1,300 people. Wow, OK. And can you tell us a little bit about how that gets organized? So you said that with the 12-week year, um, for people who aren't familiar with the 12-week year uh, book by Brian P. Moran, the idea is to kind of condense 12 months into 12 weeks. And so each week uh, has the symbolic value of a month. Uh, so how does that get translated into a language learning program? Oh, pretty easily, pretty easily because um, well, on the first week, we were writing our vision. Uh, so what, why do you want to learn? And if you have this 
vision and if it's clear and if it inspires you it will help you uh, overcome laziness uh, that will definitely uh, appear uh, throughout all those 12 weeks because it's not easy to work on language every day well actually seriously it's not easy it's not for everyone and when you have this inspiration that moves you uh, you will get up and you know find find time uh, to practice <coughs> and then every week uh, I give a task so we work on phonetics we work on basic grammar we learn or memorize basic vocabulary uh, just to exchange some stuff uh, that inspires us like music uh, in this language movies and books uh, so every week has a particular task and uh, in the end, people manage to just to, to speak. So our like final task is to uh, make a video of you talking to a native speaker. But the uh, uh, thing is, uh, for instance, if you want to prepare to some sort of exam, you don't have to do all, all those tasks. So you don't have to have a particular. Well, you you can have any goal if you want to like. One girl uh, was uh, learning to uh, read in Chinese, so her goal was to memorize lots of characters and just be able to recognize them. Uh, there are all types of uh, different, ty different or different people with different types of goals, and um, it's an absolutely not obligatory to um, to follow the weekly tasks, uh, but. Uh, uh, for many people, they help organize, they help understand how to organize their process. So, I just uh, give re really useful tasks not everyone knows about. Uh, so, uh, my personal goal is to help people uh, understand how to become an independent language learner. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think that's what I've gotten out of it a lot is the, the approaches, the different approaches to how to um target a specific skill or a specific approach and to become more familiar with that and um what when i set like just when i because i joined in october when you opened it up to uh foreigners learning russian and i think i just focused on the maximum goals and i just went way too ambitious and said oh, okay i'm going to read like 90 checkoff stories, and that just never happened. And as a result, uh, I gave up coffee for a year, so I'm drinking tea. Uh, I'm still like on three months now of no coffee, so I had to be careful with um, with my goals on that. So I'm st still taking that seriously, but um, I definitely now that I've like had some difficulty in the second marathon and started strong, and then the transition into getting fired from my office job and starting to teach online and then starting this podcast and, and finding more students. It really did affect, it, it did interrupt my second marathon. And now with with the, that accumulated experience of seeing how the community works, now I've signed up for the add one challenge and I feel like I'm comparing and, and going back and forth between what have I learned and language heroes, what have I learned from that community, and how can I apply that now to the Add One Challenge? And maybe the third time is a charm. A thir thir third time is the charm, as they say. Of like, if you fail two times, maybe the third time you're going to finally figure out what works. And like, I've been trying to record myself speaking Russian uh, like 10, 15 minutes a day. I tried to do that in the first marathon. I, I there were gaps in that and I I don't know how many videos I did make over a period of like 90 days or so but now I've been able to do this solid for like one week and when that becomes a habit and then becomes part of a routine it's no longer like going to the gym of like ah I don't want to go no don't just do it okay I'll just do it and so now it's just this is what I do um, like now with this, this podcast this is something I do every day, Monday to Friday. Um, I get to talk with awesome people about languages and learning languages. And this is just, it's part of my routine. I love this. So if making YouTube videos of speaking in Russian is just something I love and I, I, I want to do that, then it's just make that part of the routine. So that's one thing I really love about the Language Heroes community is even if my goals got really, like they vanished on the horizon because I just, I set stuff that was just impossible. At least each week, 
there was a task that I could kind of cling to and hold on to and say, well, okay, if my goals have just disappeared, uh, at least let me try something small. Let me have a small success at something and then build up a momentum again. So, because I've seen you had the curve of like enthusiasm and momentum, which I think is also in the 12 uh, week yearbook of you might start. Uh, can you can you tell us a little bit about that? The, the, this curve of like enthusiasm and because it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, when when we open the marathon, uh, the first week, everyone's so excited. I'm going to learn ten languages in one week. Hey! So and I keep saying, don't. Well, stick to one language. Keep calm. Don't like overact because people. Uh, well, almost everyone overacts, and uh, this is called a baseless, groundless optimism, unreasonable ah. optimism. Okay. <laughs> So <coughs> this is what what what, go, what what what's going on, and then uh, the curve of optimism. Well, people understand that this is hard work. So I I, I wasn't lying to them <laughs> when I warned them, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's just okay. Maybe I don't want to learn today. Maybe tomorrow, and it just keeps keeps the the mood goes from top top high to uh, like lower down down down. And um, uh, in, in, probably in the middle uh, of the term, uh, people uh, feel that they are already tired, but they don't see the results so far. And this is like the bottom, the depression where everyone starts to whine, like, well, I don't know, I'm, I'm just, uh, I will, uh, will never do this. And uh, lots of people uh, at this point, they just uh, quit. But those uh, who don't, like, uh, our motto is, uh, Quitters, uh, quitters never win. Winners never quit. So <laughs> those who 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 stay, uh, they start seeing results after this uh, in the second half, and their uh, mood arises again, and they get to, to this point where their optimism has grounds. And so this is how it yeah. works. I, I and definitely, yeah, I relate. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to, to understand uh, what you are going through because those motivation cycles they are very important because if you just um, if you if you uh, if you see that everyone is uh, like in the same boat so you're in the same situation it's it's easier to get support uh, and it's easier to uh, for instance you see that um, someone's uh, trying to overcome uh, him or herself you just you try to to do your best and to I don't know to o overcome yourself too, and uh, this is uh, what, uh, what 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 I also really like about uh, our community because uh, it's very supportive. So we don't compete. Um, I think I do maybe the ratings with time, maybe once or twice or three times uh, because uh, I. Uh, it, it's it's good for the people who like the, the time rating is based on the number of minutes that people uh, say that they study uh, and for some people it, um, it, it it is very motivating but for some they think okay I don't have like five five hours a day so uh, probably I won't be as good as those but those they, they may not have work or they may be uh, school kids are on vacation, so they just have time and have nothing to do. And uh, it, when you, this is why I don't uh, push all those ratings. So I just want uh, everyone to feel comfortable because for some people it's not really good to compare because they compare each other anyway. But uh, I'm trying not to, to push it too hard. I just, yeah, I, I I've seen with yeah with the numbers and the uh, the spreadsheet and filling that in, and there there is a there is like a good competitive element because I do remember some of the people studying like next to be in the columns and seeing like, well, so and so put in an hour today. What have I done? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll put in a little time. So I mean, that does kind of like you do come face to face with what are you doing each day. But now that I'm comparing with the Add One Challenge, where it's like there isn't really a timer. There isn't a timer element. It's just, did you do what you said you were going to do or not? 
so with with when my experience in, in the language here is with the, with the table is like I felt like I could cheat of like I did I, okay I said I was going to do an hour today I did 45 minutes so does that mean tomorrow I could do an hour and 15 minutes and I could kind of be so I started doing this kind of delusion of I can make up the time I can make up the time if like I got busy today and with with the ad one it's like well did you do it or not uh, and that kind of commitment or self-commitment and the accountability just really forced me to like, okay, who am I kidding here? If I'm going to be juggling time from one day to the other, I mean, I'm only cheating myself. So if I said I'm going to do this for an hour, I'm not trying to prove something to other people. I'm just trying to commit to this activity. So if I say I'm going to do an hour, I have to do an hour. Otherwise, there, there, isn't no, there is no catching up. Uh, each day you you either have that day and you seize it or you lose it. So this kind of I'll do more tomorrow um, It becomes impossible. I think you probably see this because you have a, a very little uh, daughter so juggling your studies and Parental responsibilities. How do you how do you balance that with language learning and? Organizing all these other language learners. How, how, how do you manage that? Um. <laughs> not not quite successful, <laughs> not as successful as I would want. <coughs> because, well, for for instance, I, right now I want to draw. And you know, I have uh, two options: so, uh, learn a language or draw <laughs> or sleep, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so with all those community tasks, uh, uh, I don't have to, to. Well, I pretty much I don't have free time. I don't have a, Sometimes I don't even have time. You know to sit alone and think about something just oh, I'm doing something all the time I just keep keep doing 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 but uh, this is probably the only approach that uh, helps you get things done so I, I don't uh, you know I don't progress I don't procrastinate for maybe for about a year already so I, I'm the person who doesn't procrastinate and it's just because I don't have time if I want to do something I just sit and do and, and there's an article I remember reading you. Uh, I believe it's a, a, a guest post that you had on Benny Lewis's website. And I think there was a tip you were saying about like just get rid of all the social media off your telephone. And I think there were some other things as well. Like so, how how do you balance that? Because if you're constantly getting bombarded by uh, tagged messages and VK and uh, getting personal messages, private messages to respond to something. How do you do? You kind of say, "I'm only going to handle stuff for an hour," or uh, how do you do that? Well, um, since the contact is my working place, like go office, I work with clients, I work, I communicate with friends. I just um, uh, I have. Um, uh, um, you know, I, I even managed to uh, get a physical training in Vkontakte. That sounds weird, but <laughs> it works. So I study there. Uh, I spend lots and lots of time. But uh, um, I, I've realized uh, that uh, you know, I, this since this is my work, I have to have working hours. So on my cell phone, for instance, if I go to bed like 10 o'clock, I just I don't uh, go to bed with my cell phone, and um, I've tried to. Uh, to um, I, I've created a separate account for messages of, from people who are not my friends because and I, I get to this uh, I go to this account uh, once a day and I I understand that uh, no one uh, has <laughs> had died from not replying uh, my in instant uh, from not getting my instant reply so you know uh, you have to protect your personal time if you want to create something if you want to study and develop and probably uh, uh, last year I had uh, launched this pro pro project uh, I was writing program and uh, I was like uh, I was really into uh, organizational stuff and I'm now I'm trying to organize my life uh, and try to you know, not just to be a slave of, of a cell phone, but uh, as I told you, I, I, I've realized that I want to draw, so I'm just painting, I'm, I'm doing stuff with my child, uh, and uh, I, I, I want to, you know, to be, like, well, for, for me, it's some, some sort of maybe, like, freedom, to be free, to be, you know, to live uh, not an imaginary life, uh, like, to show off. I don't want this. I just 
want to do my life and this year I, I'm working on, on it so I just want to organize my life. Yeah, I, I, I completely uh, relate to that. I'm like, now that I've been in this like uh, networking, marketing, teaching, uh, just getting myself onto like all the social media and, and, and talking to so many different people, I do feel like my working, like the office hours at my former job was like, okay, 8.30 to 5.30, and I only worked on translation work, and I never took any work home because obviously it's, well, it's a sensitive document, so you don't want to do that. Plus, we had uh, put in deadlines based on we're only working at the office from 8.30 to 5.30, and then we go home. So I could just go home at 5.30 and just dedicate myself to my kids uh, and just maybe have one or two English classes through Skype at night, but nothing too um, time intensive. And now all of a sudden with being an online English teacher, this whole concept of like office hours just goes out the window. And I'm like, I'm, I'm online from like 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. And it's ridiculous uh, because I'm like, wait a second, I, before I had these regular office hours and now being trying to self-impose office hours has just been so crazy in terms of like, but somebody just sent me a message, I need to respond. Or wait, there was an interesting article I just read on Facebook, I need to reply to that. Or wait, no, there's a, there's a, a tweet I need to send on Twitter, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, and then I need to edit the audio for a podcast. And then, oh, I have a class. And then I have more classes. So I need to become so super organized in time management skills and really say, like, OK, I'm going to be teaching with the regular office hours. And if you send me an email, I'll check this. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But uh, I, I I don't think I'm going to be able to keep up this rhythm of 8 AM to 1 AM. and my, my family doesn't see me anymore, even though like we saw you more when you were at the office. So it's kind of crazy, and I have to figure this out pretty pretty soon, because otherwise I'll probably get burnt out, uh, or something bad is going to happen. I Knock on wood, I hope it doesn't. But uh, just, yeah, I need to get really organized with the time management. And, and in terms of hobbies, uh, I definitely relate, because I've got like, a piano, a couple of violins, a cello, a guitar, a bass. Like they're just sitting right over here behind where I'm working, and I just I keep working online of uh, uh, um, producing content and things. And I figured, like, when am I going to play music? Wait, did I schedule 30 minutes to just go disconnect from the computer, disconnect from online life, and and go do something creative? So I I, I really hope that you find the time that you can dedicate yourself to art and, and drawing uh, because I think it's it's also very therapeutic because you, you it, it's just a real frenzy when you're online and, and just online stuff just never stops. It, there's just never always, ever. yeah, there's another video, YouTube video you can watch. There's another article you can read. That it's just so much content that keeps getting generated each day. but. We just have to filter it, and uh, it's it's really complicated sometimes. Yeah. And especially <laughs> uh, Russia. Russia is a big country, and it's like in a song, when the sun rises on Mary, it sets on him. So Vladivostok wakes up, <laughs> Moscow goes to bed, and everyone wants to write, everyone wants to talk to me, and I, I'm really I, I don't mind talking, but uh, I I I mind um, like doing this. Uh, in regular working hours, <laughs> and since so, it's yeah. a network of people, usually don't think that uh, it's just you know it's a social network. People mm -hmm. are there for fun, not uh, not uh, like sitting like me and you like uh, all the time creating some content. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, we need to find a balance. But uh, so I, I yeah, I, with the twelve week year year, I mean, in terms of language learning, but then also kind of how do I apply that to like the um, the the balance of uh, so that's I think my goal this year uh, and or at least the next month because uh, if I wait for a year, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. But so I need to get this stuff in in place now very quickly. So um, just some other questions I was thinking of of asking you about the the language heroes program. So. What would be the benefits of like foreigners who are learning Russian 
what, what is the benefit of joining the community? The original idea was to invite people who already have previous experience in learning Russian uh, because uh, the community itself is Russian and if you can read, if you can understand what's going on, it can benefit enormously because, you know, we, we there we communicate how we communicate, so it's not uh, some sort of textbook Russian, it's uh, absolutely, so this is how we Russians talk. You can get slang. You can get various set of, set of expressions. And you can uh, you can well talk to you know not the propaganda Russians but uh, the real normal guys and girls who are fond of learning languages. So I think <clears throat> this is a uh, this is a really interesting experience for people who want to you know want to. Uh, it's like. Uh, absorb as much as they can and um, make uh, the most out of it. Uh, it, it but it uh, turned out to be not uh, not uh, not that easy because, um, as as I see, uh, many people uh, uh, their level of Russian is not quite sufficient, so uh, they don't understand what's going on. <laughs> too much, too much. Uh, we uh, provide support in English, so we have all the tasks translated in English. We have special English speak speaking threads, and uh, we try uh, somehow to solve and uh, all the stuff. But um, uh, here is uh, the big thing that uh, 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 Vkontakte is Russian Facebook, and uh, we uh, we get used to seeing in Vkontakte. And uh, if you are uh, not, if you if you are used to Facebook, why would you bother like, joining another social network? So um, I think <coughs> uh, uh, there stay uh, uh, those who are dedicated to learning, so who can find time to get active, to read, uh, look through the tasks. And um, but uh, the point is uh, that if. Uh, like you, uh, Jean and uh, Kate uh, and guys like you, uh, who you know, who are open and who are so friendly, and uh, you just—it's uh, so cool to have you there because uh, it just you know it brings. Uh, so for uh, those who learn your languages, uh, it's like you know a tiny bridge uh, to the culture and. Uh, uh, it's a really amazing to have you there because you add, uh, um, how should I say, uh, it's like special flavor to w w what's going on, and we look at your results, at your progress, and we all know that Russian is not like the easiest language. Uh, Russian people make mistakes too, so it's okay to make mistakes, and uh, uh, this inspires us to work on our languages, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, 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 the, I, I think our community itself is uh, very friendly. So if you need uh, help, if you want to find friends, like pen friends, or just uh, to, to talk, to chat on Skype, uh, it, it will be like a matter of I know, 30 seconds. So there are lots and lots of people who are willing to assist, to help, to talk to you, and uh, they understand uh, uh, they have this, they're going through the same struggles with their own languages. Uh, so the community itself, I think this is a pretty awesome place to like to learn Russian in order to achieve results. So if uh, there there are people who want to try, I will be happy to, to see you there. Definitely. So uh, they should. Uh, which link uh, should they look at for finding out more information about the community? Uh, H12.ru slash en like in English. Okay, and how can uh, people find out about the community on uh, VK? Um, <laughs> VK.com then slash uh, P E T I T E P O L Y G L O T. <laughs> Petit so polyglot. Petit, petit poly polyglot. Okay, cool. And um, you told me told me a little bit that there's a um, a polyglot challenge going on. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, the great polyglot challenge. This is uh, a crazy event. I don't know what to say. Uh, so 
not long ago, uh, I've decided to to create a chance um, for people who want to be a polyglot. So since we have lots of people who want to be polyglots in our community, uh, I have wrote a letter, okay, guys, who want to become a real one, I have uh, something special for you, a contest, uh, apply if you want. So they applied, they didn't know the rules, and then uh, I closed the registration and showed them the rules. Uh, so you have uh, uh, three periods of nine weeks, nine weeks each, so 27 weeks. And uh, you have to learn three absolutely new languages for you. So one language can be like any European language, like German, I know, Spanish, French, whatever. The second language is, uh, should be a hard language, so it may be Chinese, Japanese, or Arabic, or Greek. It, uh, it should have, uh, I call this a weird alphabet, or it should have no alphabet. So it should be hard. <coughs> and the third language is up to the choice of the participants. So it can be Slavic language or, I don't know, Georgian or whatever they want. Um, but the only requirement is you, know, you shouldn't have learned this language before. Um, and uh, right now there are about 60 people <laughs> who, are, uh, who are doing this for, for I think this is the fifth week of the challenge. And the prize, uh, the prize is like, why, why are they doing this? Is uh, uh, tickets uh, to the um, Polyglot conference, tickets, uh, hotel accommodation, and, uh, like plane tickets. Uh, <coughs> yeah, yes, I, I think this is a, um, this is a, quite an exciting adventure because I, I know that there are lots of people who have several, like three languages they, they were thinking about learning, and then I have. Uh, given them the chance to start exploring them and I know uh, well based on statistics of language heroes uh, nine weeks of hard work uh, it, it could be uh, sufficient enough to get a one in, in, in any language so uh, I know that one of uh, the girls she already reported that has uh, a one in German uh, five weeks of learning Whoa. German I think this is a nice result Cool. Um, yes. uh, are you are you are you planning to go to Greece? Yes, I am. Well, yeah. I really am. Will that be your first conference, mm -hmm. or have you gone to them before? Oh, okay. Well, I will have to have you be my eyes and ears because um, I mean <laughs> I would I would so love to go to these conferences. I know there's in Berlin coming up for, for the Polyglot uh, gathering. In Berlin in May, and um, it's too soon for me with all this online stuff going on. Uh, but hope, and then I, I don't know about Greece. Uh, I mean, again, that might be too soon. But hopefully, maybe 2017, I might get a chance to go to one of these. I know there's a North American conference as well, but uh, I don't know. I don't know when that is. I'm not sure if it's in summer as well. But uh, I would really love to 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 be able to 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 go to one of these events. And to meet all these people, um, so uh, def definitely keep us up to date on what you what you find out about in uh, in Greece. And um, so it would be really it would be really cool to hear about that. So we'll have to have you back on the um, back on the podcast to kind of give us an update how that goes. And so um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things going on here for the language learning community. And um, it's just wonderful, wonderful what you do and all the budding polyglots that you have been inspiring, uh, myself included. Uh, it's just incredible the amount of hard work that you've put into this. And I imagine it just, it does take up a lot of time, but it's great that you have a, a really wonderful community of people who are very supportive and uh, especially the mentors and cur curators, they do an excellent job. And there's so many people, I can't name all of them right now, but uh, they're, they've been very inspiring. And I know that they do a wonderful job to help uh, the people learning uh, the different languages in the community. So just keep up the, the, the great work that you guys are all doing. And uh, so when is the next marathon going to start? Uh, in June. And I will be opening registration in May. In May. OK. So I'll make sure to let people know if they are discovering this episode, this podcast, uh, maybe not now, but in the future, to, to make sure that uh, to say that an update, this link is open. You can register. And so that will be 
starting in June. Okay. So enjoy enjoy the time off because it seems like you've had a really uh, steady nine months of of just constantly uh, keeping uh, time management and and motivating people, answering questions. So, uh, are, are you traveling anywhere in the next few months? And Portugal. Oh, okay. Well, en enjoy your uh, your trip. I think it's uh, bon bon voyage. I think. If, uh, <laughs> we got that. We got that. <laughs> Cool, cool. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Genia, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And I hope uh, if people are listening and you're really interested in learning Russian, Language Heroes is definitely an awesome community to join. Uh, you'll, you'll be treated like a king. Um, in fact, they voted me king in the October uh, marathon. Um, I did not live up to that in the winter marathon, but that's that's another story. But uh, they, they definitely are very supportive of anybody who takes on Russian uh, because it, it is not a small task to learn this language, but it's a very beautiful language. Uh, it's, it really opens up a lot of doors. And right now, I'm finding a lot of inspiring people to, to do collaborative projects with and to find out about how they learn languages, how they teach them. And there's a lot of people um, who are in the language heroes community. So it's a wonderful place to network and find out how to learn languages very effectively. So I highly recommend it. And uh, definitely check out um, Genia's, uh, her, her website and uh, the community. And um, so, yeah, keep up the good work. <laughs> That's all I can say. I, I just uh, keep Thank praising you her. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pleasure to have you. For inviting me. Yes, it was really nice to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'll end this by saying if, if you're interested in taking an English lesson with me or hearing more about my language Mandarin, so you can visit my website, hugginsinternational.com. That's H U G G I N S international.com. Or you can send me an email at hugginsinternational at gmail.com. Thank you very much, uh, Genia. And thank you, everybody, for listening to this podcast. Uh, take care. Paka, paka. Paka, paka.